you like it? Yeah. The camera person for today? Indeed. You guys have to leave soon, right? I do. I have to drive. Where are you headed off to? Ashland Co-op to deliver. Today's our delivery day. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, I called Derek and said, won't be here till, won't be there till three. Well, we're, I mean, we just wanted to stop because we, you know, tried the lamb and we're on our way north and we thought it would be cool and we film everything. So we just thought we'd film. <laughs> who, who made the lamb? <laughs> I did. did. He's a oh, chef. you, yeah. I understand. David's a chef. Okay. Home, so they don't really want to come super close to us. Um, my dogs are on whistles now, but when they start off their own voice command, Tommy's tree. The other thing about a whistle is that if I'm here and the sheep are out in that far field in the morning and I need to gather them and bring them in, I'm not having to scream at Tommy to do it. I just whistle, and you don't get emotion in your voice. You know, if you're having a bad day, <laughs> and you want to, and you start, you don't have the emotion when you use a whistle, and it carries much, much further. They're bred. As a working dog, it doesn't matter how hot it is, how cold it is, how muddy and disgusting it is, they are always like, yes! They're incredible, they're an incredible working partner. It's a real privilege to work with a dog. They have a capacity for play just as much as they have a capacity for work. And our dogs all live in the house. My mom, oh yeah, my mom used to say, apart from Sasha, my mom used to say, they'll never work if you spoil them like that. Because she was from an old farming family in England. I was like, yeah, they will. In the UK, it's more, they don't have cowboys, they have cow herds, but they have shepherds, sheep herds, and that's a, probably a more respected thing. And also the dog handling is, and the dog breeding of the Border Collie is like, really an art in England among the old shepherds and farmers. And they use them for everything. I mean, they, and they train them to a, high, a pretty high level. Um, and here a lot of people just want to have a dog that will get ahead and a dog that will bite. And I really, they don't need to bite to move sheep. You know, they move sheep with the power of their eye and their presence and the fact they have quiet power. They don't need to be up there biting on cows and biting on sheep. All it does is get the animals upset. And the whole point of raising sheep the way that we, we raise them is to do it quietly and humanely. Yeah, it's a hard thing to take a lamb or any, to kill a lamb or a, or a cow. I mean we take it really seriously but it's really even harder when your old ewes are done working and we actually take ours down to the butcher and then they're killed there quickly and humanely and we feed them to our dogs. Probably sounds a little callous but it's a lot better than going on a truck to Mexico with you know, hundreds of other sheep and I just, I think that I like to know where they've gone. I like to know it's been quick and clean for them at the end. Hey, Cash, how are you? How are you? How are you? She's not always very polite to the dogs, but she's a pretty easy going sheep. Yeah. Oh no, Tommy, you got something up your nose? Tom, Tom, let me see. Oh, sneezles. You and Daniel both got schnitzels. It's not a get-rich-quick scheme by any means, but it's a, I mean, I feel really proud of the lamb we raise, but I just hate, I hate the fact that my customers are having to pay so much for it. But you don't need to eat a whole bunch of it. As far as I'm concerned, you know, one or two lamb chops is plenty for a meal, not some giant piece of meat that covers your whole plate. It's a very serious thing to kill an animal. People should take it very seriously. They shouldn't be expecting to eat meat seven days a week, two meals a day. I, I don't think they should. I don't think our country can sustain it. The, you know, it just, it just becomes agribusiness, greed and, and suffering. Who wants to eat an animal that's been standing in a feedlot in Colorado through the winter with no shelter up to its knees in dirt and mud? Ugh, I don't. I don't eat any meat because I don't know where it's come from. There's a really great quote by, um, have you ever read Henry Beston? 
think I have. He wrote on a northern farm, and it's um, there's animals are not brethren, they're not underlings, they're other nations caught with ourselves in this net of life and time. And I think that's totally how I feel about them. And hopefully we treat them that way too.